Hello world of YouTube. Welcome back to another one of my Google Apps Scripting videos. Today we're diving into App Maker, a fairly new tool um, in that there's not a whole lot of documentation out there because it is limited to uh, business accounts, um, education accounts, and enterprise accounts. So it's not out there for wide release. So not everyone's using it yet, but it is a really cool tool, and I want to take a look at it. I've heard peop more people mentioning it, and my familiarity with it is low, so I need to introduce myself to it. And I'm going to start by just going through the documentation tutorials, and I thought, why not record that? And we, we can all we can do that together. The first thing we're gonna have to do is make sure that we have AppMaker actually turned on. So in your admin dashboard, if you're not the administrator of your domain, you're gonna have to get with the administrators or uh, request this, or maybe it is already uh, available to you and you wanna just learn more about it. But the way to actually turn it on, you need to head into your apps and then the additional Google services and make sure that AppMaker is turned on for everyone. Okay, now that we have AppMaker activated, we're gonna head in there and create a new blank application. Simple enough. And now that we're in there with the blank application, let's go ahead and change the name. Let's just call it Hello World App. And we have changed the title. We're done. We've learned all that there is to know about AppMaker. Just kidding, we have to do a couple other things. So reading through the documentation showed me that the pages are kind of how you organize the elements that you're gonna be putting onto your application. Let's go ahead and rename this first page, hello, hello page. Now we can add widgets to the page with this tool. And we're gonna add a couple of things. We wanna add a text box. And I think we can just drag that in here. Yes, perfect. So that's our first text box. We can resize that. And let's add a button. And oh, that's cool. Cool little alignment features there. I want it to be right in the middle. OK, let's change a few properties. When I click on the text box, let's go ahead and change the label to, say, And we'll change the name itself from textbox one to your whoops, your name. In fact, I'm gonna lowercase that first value, your name, and label type your name. And for the button itself, oh, I'm gonna move that. It doesn't seem vertically aligned. That looks a little bit better, but actually still not really. Uh, for the button, I'm gonna change the text to be say your name. We still have our button selected here so we can look at these properties. Can I adjust this? Oh yeah, very nice. Yeah, let's make this bigger. Um, I wanna go down to events here. We got say your name. We're gonna go down to events and I want the on click event. Let's click that and let's do custom action. Ah, and here we go. We can type some JavaScript in here. Um, we're gonna put an alert in and say hello. And is there any completion? Ah, there is. So let's go through app, app dot, app dot page dot. Pages dot. Hello page dot, this is descendants. And then we want your name, and then we want the value. So we're gonna say hello, and let's even concatenate a little exclamation point in there. So I think we should be able to test that now by clicking preview. And as always, giving ourselves permission Just like with AppScript, you have to authorize your own applications. 
And here, oh, we've got a nice little debugger tool at the bottom. I can type my name and then say your name. And I've got, hello, Jordan. What, the, what, what happens if I, I didn't put in any checking there? So yeah, no, it's gonna display null. That's good. So our next step is to actually display that name on the page somewhere. So let's close out of our preview. And we're gonna add another text box uh, label here. Not a text box, a uh, it's just called a label. So let's drag that onto our field. And in our property editor, we can remove the name and let's call it output. So we actually, now we want, instead of an alert, we will have our on click. I wonder if there is a way to open this. I wonder what preset actions are. Oh, okay. Interesting. Okay, let's just stick with custom action. I'm gonna delete this and we wanna set the value of the label now to our, um, actually, let's see that. We, we wanna maintain this. Let's just do const. Um, let's see if we can set that variable there. This is, ah. I guess it wants me to use var. Interesting. Okay, so let's just follow our autocomplete tree again. This time we start with, instead of app, we do widget dot root. Where'd it go? Uh, dot root dot descendants dot output dot value. I guess we said output. Equals hello. Uh, and I want to camel case this var here. So let's set done and let's give that a preview. Okay, the problem. In the on click, I'm setting output. I want the output dot text. We've got to set the text value. Um, this is some old school. I, I'm having to remember back to the JavaScript of a few years ago. That gave me a warning about using ES6. Now I'm gonna have to read into that before I make my next video because that would be super helpful if you can use that. So now I've got Hello Jordan appearing right there, but what happens when I have this null still? It's gonna say Hello Null. Well, let's fix that so that it handles that error. And we can still write in JavaScript here. I really wish I could resize this window. That would be helpful, but it doesn't seem to allow that. I'm wondering, the script will run Hmm. I wonder if uh, over here I can actually add a script that ties in. I don't know, but I will uh, give it a try. For now, let's work with this. Let's just go ahead and put an if statement in here. If your name equals null, else we want to let's remove that Whoa. can I yes control right bracket works but in it if it is null whoa let's put in widget that root that descendants output dot text equals hello world. Can I use single brackets? Let's try single brackets. And let's try it again. That 
works. I remove it. Hello world. Perfect. I'm going to do one more little step of cleanup here. Let's go ahead and set that output to a variable, and that way, whoops, I can just remove it from here, simplify that a little bit, since I'm using that twice. Oh, thank you for automatically saving my work. And there you have it, the very first Hello World app tutorial done in the books. Check back tomorrow. We're going to go into tutorial number two. I'm going to do all four of them for the remainder of this week. Look forward to seeing you there. And if you have any suggestions about how to push this even further, go ahead and leave a comment below and I will see you soon.